Hello and welcome to Cards by Kendra. Today I'm collaborating with Sierra from Sierra T Designs to celebrate us both reaching 2,000 subscribers on our YouTube channels recently and to share some spring floral Mother's Day cards with you. We both shared some pictures of stamp sets that we received recently with each other and we each picked which one the other would use for the project today. And this is the stamp set from Alta New that she picked for me to use. It's a layering stamp set called Vintage Roses and it has a coordinating die set. I'm also going to be using this background stamp from Hero Arts called Script Bold Prints. And then some of the other products that I'll be using for this card include these Positively Saturated Inks by Simon Says Stamp. There's three shades for the roses and also three shades for the leaves. And I'll be using this stitched rope rectangle die here by Cat Scrappiness for the background panel. And uh, this is going to be an A2 size card. And for stamping the background, I'm also using this gray ink by Simon Hurley called Wolf. And then for my sentiment, I'm using this stamp set by Picket Fence Studios called The Best Mom I Know. Before we get started, I wanted to mention that we are both doing giveaways on our channels. I'll be giving away this awesome bundle of crafty goodies that you see here, and I'll share a closer look at this bundle and how to enter to win here in a little bit, but let's go ahead and get started. If you're not already a subscriber, I hope you'll go ahead and click on that subscribe button. Since this is a layering stamp set, I'm using my Stamparatus by Stamping Up. Now, I normally use my Misty stamping platform, but if you have a lot of layering stamp sets, this is the best stamping positioner tool, and I'll show you why. It has hinges on two sides and these see-through reversible plates, so that means you have four sides to work with. Now, most of the images in this stamp set have four layers, so I will be able to use all four sides and stamp out a bunch of roses once I get all of the stamps placed on these plates. So I'm going to start with the solid images first. These should be stamped with the lightest shade of ink. Now this stamp set has an outline around the different stamps which shows which stamps go together as far as how they should be layered which is very helpful. And since there's so many roses, um, there's actually five to be exact, I've sped this video up quite a bit because this is kind of a tedious process, but I wanted to keep most of the footage so you could see the steps. It's just gonna be going by a lot faster. So I've placed all of the solid rose images down on top of this five and a half by eight and a half inch piece of Simon Hurley stark white cardstock, which is 110 pounds. And the three inks that I'm using, I'm gonna um, use those peachy pink colored roses first for the roses and the lightest shade is called cheeky and that's what i'm inking these solid images up with and since i'm inking up multiple stamps at the same time i have to be really careful not to have lines from the edge of the ink pad now to make the most of the cardstock i flipped it over and i stamped the same images on the other side now if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I like to make a bunch of cards at one time. So even though I'm not doing that for this video, I wanted to at least stamp out a bunch of images that I can use later on since I'm going through the process of adding all these layering stamps. But in order to apply pressure, I'm using my air hockey table pusher that has felt on the bottom and that works great for what I'm doing right now. So now that I have that first image stamped out, I cleaned off the stamps with the microfiber cloth and I added the stamps for the next layer on the other hinge. And so I'm stamping that with the next color of ink, which is the next to the lightest shade. And I believe this one is called blush. And so um, I'm doing that for both sides. And then what I'm going to do next for the next layer is flip the hinge over. So instead of um, showing you the process of me stamping out all the different colored roses, I'm only going to show you the process of doing these peachy orange roses first. But here I flip my hinge over and I'm adding the, the third layer down on top of these roses. This printed acetate sheet that the stamps come on, I definitely use this quite a bit as my guide. And there's lines around each one and that's super helpful because at this point I'm trying to line up or at least match up the right roses um, to make sure that I'm putting the layers where they're supposed to go. 
but uh, I like to use my microfiber cloth to kind of wipe up some of the ink that might, you know, residue that might be on there from stamping before. But just like I did before, I uh, added the next shade. This is the darkest of the three inks, and this one's called Pucker. And so I added that and stamped both sides. Now, not all of the roses in this stamp set have four layers, but three out of the five do. So my last step to finish off the roses is to add the last three stamps on top. And then I need to stamp them with a darker ink. But at first I thought I would use the pucker color again and just apply several layers. And these other stamps are kind of in the way for me to be able to apply pressure with my air hockey table pusher thing. But I got a lot of ink everywhere with these stamps for some reason. So of course I had to clean that up. But this layer wasn't really showing up very well using that same color ink. I wanted it to be a little bit darker. Um, so you'll see here it's not really showing up. And see there's the mess that I made. <laughs> but I did find a darker shade from a different brand. It's uh, called Moroccan Spice. It's by My Favorite Things. And uh, it's just a little bit darker than that pucker color. And so I uh, added that to that fourth layer. And this was perfect for this fourth set of stamps um, for that last layer there. Now, while I had all of these stamps placed on my Stamparatus, I went ahead and stamped out more roses and other colors. For these pink roses, I used Simon Hurley inks in Piggyback, Rosy Cheeks, Prom Queen, and Lovestruck. And I just wanted to share the image so that you could see the difference with these inks versus the first color that I used. But I also stamped out some blue and yellow roses off camera, which I'll show you here shortly. So now it's time to stamp the leaves. I'm going to use these open white spaces on the cardstock to stamp the leaves, just making sure not to get them too close to the roses because I will need to leave room for the metal cutting dies. But just like I did with the roses, I started with the solid, solid leaf images first and I inked them up with the lightest shade of green and that's called Aspen. And of course, to make the most use of my cardstock, I flipped it over and I stamped the same images on the other side so that I can have a full five and a half by eight and a half page of roses and leaves. And so next, after um, stamping this lattice shade down, I, I had to do it several times because I wanted it to be a little bit darker. But I went ahead and stamped this lattice shade on the other side, and I did that on all of the other color rose panels that I stamped out before. So I went ahead and took care of all of the lattice shade first. And so uh, again, here's the pink roses and doing the same process. But then my next step was to add the next layer or leaf layer on top of the solid leaves. And this was a little trickier, making sure that I placed the right layers on the right leaves. But again, I really relied on the printed acetate sheet from the packaging of the stamps to make sure that I was using the right stamps in the right spots. But same as before, I turned the plates over for the next layer. And here again, I'm just trying to make sure that I've got everything where it's supposed to go. And then I stamp the next shade, which I believe is Sage. But these are the blue roses that I stamped out. I used more Simon Hurley inks for these roses. This time the lightest shade was Breakup Blue and then No Diving. And then the darkest shade was Midnight Snack. And I just added more layers of the darkest shade for that fourth layer stamp since I didn't have anything darker than the Midnight Blue. Um, but Basically, I'm just continuing the same process for the leaves that I did for the roses. And then I also showed you the yellow set of roses. So flipping the plate over, adding the next set of images, stamping it with the next shade darker. So this is, as you can see, the, the process here. So now that I have a ton of roses and leaves stamped out, my next step was to add the coordinating dies on top of the images to cut them out with my die cutting machine. So I used some mint tape from scrapbook.com to help hold them in place. 
And there were a few of the leaves that I did get a little too close to the roses. So I'll just have to cut those out separately after I cut out what I can get to fit on here. But after placing these dies where they needed to be, I ran them through my Spellbinders die cutting machine. And now it's time to work on my card base. I cut a sheet of Simon Hurley's stark white cardstock in half vertically so that I could make a top folding A2 sized card. This measures four and a half by five. I'm sorry, four and a quarter by five and a half. And I scored it at five and a half inches. And I like to place the edges of my cardstock in the edge of the scoreboard to make sure they line up correctly. So after cleaning up my stamparatus, I removed the foam mat since this is a rubber cling stamp and it's thicker than the clear stamps I was using before. But rather than peeling the cling stamp away from the acetate, I just laid the stamp down on the grid with the rubber stamp image facing up. I figured this would be easier. And so I placed the panel down on top that measures four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I've applied some mint tape on the back of that panel to hold it down to the plate so that it won't move when I stamp it in case I need to stamp this more than once. I applied the gray ink just to the center part of the stamp and it came out perfectly. So next I used the stitched rope die on this panel to give it a decorative edge. And then I glued that down on top of my card base using some Barely Arts liquid glue. Now with all of the roses that I had die cut, I played around with placement off camera. And once I was happy with my floral clusters, I used some Glad press and seal and I placed the sticky side on top of the floral images so that it would save my placement. And since there were five roses in this stamp set, I wanted to use all of them on my card. So I made two different clusters. I ended up using leaves from an entire sheet, not just the leaves that were stamped on one side. So I'm just trying to figure out where I want them on the card. And now that they are placed where I want them, I'm gonna add some liquid glue to the underneath of all the pieces that overlap and then on the bottom in order to attach it to the card. And then I did the same thing for the larger floral cluster on the bottom. And I did layer up some of the leaves on top of others just to give it some dimension. But I really like how this is looking. So while I'm doing this, I'll tell you how to enter the giveaway. First, make sure you're a subscriber to my channel and also comment on this video with where you're from and also tell me which item in my giveaway bundle would you be most excited to win. Now, this giveaway is open to U.S. subscribers only, unfortunately, due to high shipping costs. But this giveaway is open for one week from the date of the posting of this video. So it will end on Sunday, April 17th on Easter. And I will post the winner here on my YouTube channel shortly after. So make sure you turn on the notifications so you don't miss the post to claim your prize. So now for the sentiment, I'm using the stamp set that, that says, or the stamp that says, Dear Mom, I love you. And I'm using my Stamparatus again. I love that the underneath design of the stamping platform holds the magnets that you need to hold your projects in place. I always forget about that. I'm always looking around for my magnets. But so I'm stamping this using that same gray ink from Simon Hurley and I'm adding several layers because I want this nice and dark and bold. So next I added my anti-static powder tool on top and I wiped off the stamp. And then I added some Versamark ink so that I can add some clear embossing powder on top to make this sentiment shiny. Now I let my heat tool heat up for about 30 seconds before applying it to the powder. And I just grabbed a scrap piece of white cardstock and this one is kind of thin. So it started warping on me when I added the heat, but that's okay because I'm just gonna cut this down using a rectangle strip die. And then I'm gonna trim it down to be very, very small. And I'm gonna place it to the left of that bottom cluster of flowers. And so next I added some gray glitter enamel dots in different sizes next to the floral clusters. And then I also added some clear wink of Stella to the tops of some of the flowers just to give it a little bit of glitter. And then I took a Copic marker and I added a few more green veins. It was a pine green color and I added those to the leaves that didn't have the darker shade on them. And this finishes off my card. 
I really love how this turned out and I think my mom is really going to love it. Hopefully she won't watch this video and see her Mother's Day card ahead of time. But please let me know what you think in the comments below. Now here's a closer look at the items in my giveaway. First there are seven different Copic markers. Some are they're mostly lighter shades and some earth tones in there. Next there's these square sequins by Doodlebug Designs. There's this Kindness Floral Stamp Set by Pink and Main. And then there is this die set called Opulent Swirls by Crafters Companion. It's got these intricate swirl dies and some Hello and Love Word dies. And then there's also these Tropical Designer Series papers by Stampin' Up! I believe they're retired. But there are 12 6 inch by 6 inch sheets. And it comes with matching colored cardstock that has been cut down to five and a half by eight and a half inches. So you can make some beautiful tropical cards with this. I'm just showing you all of the different papers that come in this little mini kit here. Next, there's this set of blue mosaic stickers, which is perfect for embellishing your cards. And then there's also this stencil from Picket Fence. And there's a scraper tool from scrapbook.com. This is super handy. I already have one and I use it all the time. And next is this project kit from Stampin' Up! called Color Me Happy. It comes with cardstock, paper, envelopes, embellishments, twine, pretty much everything you need to make the project shown on the front. And then finally, there is the spring or Easter themed 12 by 12 collection kit by Simple Stories called Hip Hip Hooray. And it comes with 12 by 12 papers and the designs that you see here on the cover, plus a bunch of cut aparts that are shown on the bottom. And then this sheet of coordinating stickers here. So this giveaway, like I said, is for U.S. subscribers only. Please make sure that you watch Sierra's video, which I have linked at the top of the description box below, and check out her giveaway also. You can have a chance to win her prize by watching, subscribing, and commenting on her channel. I really appreciate you watching. Please don't forget to click the thumbs up button if you like this video. Thank you again and I hope you will join me on my next video. Have a wonderful day.